Senator Amer, this is, we had this bill last year, I believe. Yes. yes and um, would you like to go over it? I think it's a pretty self-explanatory bill, but if you would like to introduce it to us, that would be great. Yes, thank you very much for the opportunity. Um, so I guess I'm Senator Debbie from Chittenden County, for the record. Um, and uh, Indy and I did um, introduce this bill um, last year. Um, so basically, I mean, the bill itself is extremely straightforward. It um, removes Columbus Day as a, one of the state holidays and inserts uh, in, um, Indigenous Peoples Day in its stead. And that has been done three years in a row now by executive proclamation. Um, it started with Governor Shumlin doing it, and then Governor Scott has done it two years in a row. So to, to put this in legislation would mean that the governor still has to keep doing it year after year. Mm -hmm. It would just you know, be permanent. And um, yeah, it, you know, I just wanted to say the reason that, um, that I bring this forward and that it's important to me is um, I think that um, what, well, there's been a movement in, since 1977 to, um, to try to, to make this change across the country. And various cities uh, have, have done it. Um, those states really, well, Alaska has, has made a permanent switch. Uh, and South Dakota has, um, has um, done Native American Day. Um, but the reason I think it's- Can I just interrupt? Is, did they do it on Columbus Day or did they do a separate day? On, the, on, on Columbus Day. On the Columbus Day, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. Um, and the, the reason I think it's important is, um, you know, uh, it Columbus Day, as it is, represents the idea that um, you know my ancestors and many, many of ours, you know, white European settlers, came to this country, and um, they um, took the land away from the native peoples who were, who were already here. They um, and, and they exploited their labor. Uh, sometimes they were they violently killed them outright. Uh, other times they brought diseases that killed them over a slow period of time. They denigrated um, the indigenous people's customs and, um, uh, and and denigrated their spiritual practices. And so we, you know, we it's really a history of, of terrible um, disservice and, and cruelty to uh, the native peoples who were here. And um, you know, I. I I think it's it's just really time for us to set the record straight. This is it's it's symbolic. Obviously, it's not a you know I mean it's you know, it's not doesn't it's not very involved and doesn't start programs and all that sort of thing. It changes the holiday, um, but symbols matter. We've seen that across the country. Um, you know the Confederate um, War memorials in the South. Uh, you know uh, are symbols, but uh, people have made a movement to you know, put those. In museums and try to be more inclusive in the public square and this is along the same lines it's trying to recognize that um, you know the, the indigenous peoples who were here first have been ill-treated historically and so we're just trying it's a way for us to sort of try to make amends symbolically and to um, to, to give them their due um, so that's uh, that's basically why I, I think it's important and I did prepare a little packet of information for you. Two sh very short uh, articles. One is from um, uh, CNN, a CNN reporter that explains what, uh, how the Columbus Day holiday started, and um, you know, and why it would be uh, helpful to to change the name of it. And the and this other one is from a historian, um, associate professor of history in Illinois, who uh, talks about what you tell your your child about uh, Columbus and I think it's very it, it's very balanced in terms of saying you know this is this is part of our history and it, it was what it was and um, Columbus isn't you know the most horrible person in the world um, but he's had 500 years of being celebrated, <laughs> of being celebrated. and now it's time you know, now we have new awarenesses and new realizations and it's time for us to embrace those and to, and to make a change. So that's basically why. I have a little question. I yeah. just wonder, Ms. Carl, we're, we're, uh, we, we, since I'm swapped to do, we're calling it Indigenous Peoples Day. 
other folks have called it Native People's Day. I just wondered what the is there significance to choosing those words? I don't know, I'm just talking feeling, I'm just curious. Yes, the, there was a, um, the, at the conference in 1977 that sort of kicked all this off, um, it was an international conference on discrimination against indigenous populations in the Americas, and they suggested that uh, it be called Day of Solidarity with Indigenous People, and so it's gotten shortened to Indigenous People's Day. Alaska, that is the name that Alaska has given it, and many, and there's many, many cities that have also used that, 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 that word, okay. that phrase. And the, when Phil did this in September of this year, of last year, um, it's just a one-off, right? I mean, when he says, it, he hasn't declared um, he's not um, able to. He can't do it permanently. No, the governor can't do it permanently. But has he, have they been doing this every year for three, a while? three years? For three years. Governor Shumlin started it, and then Governor Scott has done it twice. And they've done that on Columbus Day, or is it that's, that's right. Yes. Thank you. Any more questions Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome to stay, but I know you have another committee. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Other responsibilities. <laughs> well, yes, and I love spending time with you. Well, we love that. that. <laughs> and right. you are an articulate advocate for this issue. Well, yes, thank you, you are with all your issues. Thank you. Thank you. All right. See you later. Thank you. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you, Senator. So we um, have um, Rich, and are you Robert White? Robert right, White, yes. right. And are you going to testify? Uh, no, he's testifying for both of us. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. I'm here to listen. You're here to listen. Okay. So we'll let you decide. We have Rich on the list first, but we'll let you decide how you want to proceed here. Thank you, Chair White, and members of the committee for the invitation to be here. I'd like to start by uh, introducing. In the Benaki language, it's the language of this land. So, um, and I'll switch to English so we can all get on the same page. Thank you. <laughs> That'd be helpful. Sure. time I want to go to the house. go down and buy your So, my name is Rich. From Brattleboro. Uh, it's good to be here with you, my friends, and uh, thank you. So, in English, my name is Rich Holshue. I serve on the uh, Vermont Commission for Native American Affairs here in Vermont, created by statute 2010, uh, revised statute, appointed by the governor, Governor Shumlin, at first, and I'm in my second term, renewed by Governor Scott. I have a handout here that I sent to Gail, which I believe you have copies of. I'm going to work my way through this and use it as a framework uh, for talking points. And that's up on our website now. This yeah. document will be you sent posted now. I believe so. Yeah. Right. So you should, should have copies of this. It's an overview of Indigenous Peoples Day and Columbus Day in the state of Vermont. Just two pages. Okay, got it. I'm just realizing that is right. But I'll work my way right through it. So H-119, an act related to Indigenous Peoples Day, and S-68, the one which we are discussing today, of the same title, are currently being considered in the respective chambers committees for this session. As uh, Senator Ingram said, this is a copy of last year's, uh, last session's bill. The language in each is essentially identical, um, laying out the same reasoning behind the, the proposed action and its implementation. The language also closely follows the executive proclamations which have been alluded to in the past three years, made by Vermont's sitting governor, uh, Governor Shumlin in 2016, and repeated by Governor Philip Scott in 17 and 18. I am the person that made those proclamation requests of the governor. Um, I'm happy that they were honored. And um, as a matter of fact, I actually wrote the language. So the language you're seeing in the bill follows from those, uh, pretty much. 
So here we are in Vermont. Um, I love this place. We like to consider ourselves a leader nationally for uh, social equity, various movements that come along. We're not always the leader, but we often are. We are not alone in considering this change. As uh, Senator Ingram mentioned, over 60, 60 cities and towns nationwide have already taken this step. It started with Berkeley, California in 1992. Berkeley was mentioned earlier. <laughs> Uh, Santa Cruz and LA, among others, have followed in California, Minneapolis, Seattle, Portland, and Nashville. Here in New England, Indigenous Peoples Day on the second Monday in, in October, also known as Columbus Day, has been declared on a permanent basis in Bangor, Orono, and Portland, Maine, Cambridge, Amherst, Northampton, and Pittsfield, Massachusetts, Durham, New Hampshire last year. Bridgeport, West Hartford, and Connecticut, and in Vermont, three towns have already taken this step forward. Marlboro, Brattleboro, the town where I come from, and Hartford. Several other states, including Oregon, North Carolina, and Iowa, have also had governor's proclamations made, which had effect for one year. Uh, the newspapers will often report this erroneously. They have said that those states have made the change. Most national newspapers are now saying that Vermont has made the change permanently. They just didn't read the fine print. <laughs> but we can work toward that. And I will make the case that no one state in this country has actually done what we are proposing to do. Changed Columbus Day on the second Monday of October to Indigenous Peoples Day. Nobody has done that yet. However, there are bills in the legislatures of Montana, New Mexico, and Maine right now, just as this one is. It's not a contest, but it's always nice to be a leader <laughs> for a good cause. Um, yeah, Alaska never did observe Columbus Day, but they have Indigenous Peoples Day now. Hawaii never observed Columbus Day. It doesn't mean much to them. They do observe Discoverer's Day on the second Monday in October, and that's not for Captain Cook. Yeah, They're bad guys. Yeah, right. It's for the Polynesian explorers that came there. Right. And sorry, what does Alaska do? Does it do anything? Honestly? They have Indigenous Peoples Day as of last year. Oh, so they are the first state to do it. They never had Columbus Day. They didn't change Oh, that. they no. never. It's not the same symbolic change. Got it. Okay. Technicalities, but. I think they have a smaller Italian population. There's any number of factors, and a, and a very high native percentage. Right. Yes. So I, I want to address Columbus Day. Um, that's very much a part of this conversation. Um, what's that all about? How did that come to be? <laughs> It is a state holiday here in Vermont. Only about half of the rest of the states in the country observe Columbus Day. It's not universal. It is a federal holiday. It's not universal on the state level. So Columbus landed in the Bahamas on October 12, 1492. Never set foot on the continent. But that's the anniversary that we look at. It was at first observed as a patriotic holiday. Columbus was just the token name on it. It was not a celebration of Columbus. It was basically another 4th of July, a national celebration. Um, observing national progress, um, discovery, manifest destiny, struggle against great odds, that kind of a thing. It began to become uh, associated with the Italian-American community because Columbus himself was, was an Italian, although he sailed for Spain uh, around the turn of the last century. So Colorado was the first state to recognize it in 1907. Several other states followed suit, including Vermont. I was not able to get into a copy of the Green Books to find out exactly when Vermont adopted that. It's not in the online version. Oh, interesting. 
Um, but probably sometime shortly after 1900. On a federal uh, basis, uh, after heavy lobbying from the Knights of Columbus, um, Roman Catholic Italian American Fraternal Organization, FDR in Congress, did make it a federal holiday, October 12th, the anniversary of Columbus's landing in 1937. It was moved to in 1971 through the Monday Holiday Act with a bunch of other holidays to the second Monday in October, and that's where it sits right now. And that's what we're talking about. So, there's your mechanics. There's, uh, there's how we got here. Um, I'm not going to dig into Columbus the man a whole lot. I will say that I personally feel that celebrating personalities and putting them on a pedestal is usually setting yourself up for a fall. We see that often. Um, uh, there's a lot of it going on right now. It's good President's Weekend. It's just now President's Weekend. Yeah. So it's not about that people. Reason. We're, we're all human. We have our frailties. Nobody is perfect, but we aspire to do better. That's why I'm talking about this. Columbus uh, Columbus was, is, is a part of this story. I do not uh, feel that Columbus should be removed from the story. He's very much a part of the story. Um, this happens everywhere, not just here, all over the world. This is why it's about Indigenous Peoples Day, plural, possessive. It's not just a, a Beneke Day. It's not just Native American Day. Indigenous people stay. So, by exploring a more complete narrative with the inclusion of all the voices involved, most of them have been left out. This is about completing the history, not erasing the history. We can listen, understand, and resolve to do better. Columbus is a part of the story, but we do know now that he was not the idealistic, magnanimous, inspirational figure that we were all told years ago my own education included. He's not the one to be set on a pedestal and honored for his great and often fictional accomplishments. Um, we can learn these things. The heroic myth was created in service, I'm speaking from a native perspective here, to a set of divisive ideologies of separation and entitlement by one group over another which left those outside of its walls denied, dispossessed, and dead. This is the truth. Not to be ignored is the fact that a version of this attitude has played out all over the planet. The indigenous people of each place at the receiving end of exploitation, mm -hmm. disenfranchisement, and dismissal, paying the ultimate price, usually. We're human. We haven't changed much. This is why we learn the lessons of history. We should work to honor and celebrate the resilience of the human spirit, its creativity, its persistence, and adaptability. There's a lot to be done, there's a lot to be undone. It's part of the balancing process, it's about balance. In order to provide for the future generations, the ones that are gonna inherit this earth. I take this as a mutual responsibility. I take this very seriously. This is not just a pet project. I, I kind of have to do this for what is to come and for those who have been have to honor our ancestors. So uh, I think that is a way of stating the charge of yourselves as elected legislators, responsibility to your community look out for their well-being, your consideration and support, appreciated now. You can see you, Leone. I offer you my great thanks for listening. I would be happy to entertain any questions that you might have. I see my role here as a, uh, a bridge builder, a reconnector. I am about relationship. We are all brothers and sisters. You are all my relatives in a very real way. We're all related. And uh, we're all in this together. So 
separation and splitting things apart, I don't see as a, as a helpful thing. I can bring them back together. Sorry, that was the answer. That was somebody pulling their head in oh. to inquire or something. So, any questions I can answer for you? Well, I don't have any questions about what you said, because what you said was, was good. And it's about being more honest about our history and our culture and whatnot. I'm more curious about the effort that was made last year to make this into the law, to make this change. Were you involved in that effort? Um, the reason why I'm asking, I'm wondering what the opponents, what, what the, like why, why, why has, who has slowed down this process? Why is it not happening? I was involved in the proclamation effort with the governor. Um, as far as legislation, my understanding is that there were bills in both the House and the Senate last year, just as there are this year, and that they made it into a committee, and that's where they stopped. And I don't know if that was because of workload, timing, uh, there was tension, a I don't know. Yeah. But it's the same bill again. I would say that the atmosphere, um, the general atmosphere has, has tilted in this direction with the um, action at Standing Rock raising a native situation higher in the public eye. And um, I think with the governor having done this three years in a row and Vermont still able to be a leader, okay. but everyone else is already going there. Okay. Uh, this is the time. And the governor clearly didn't experience much pushback when he, when he did, made the proclamations. He I didn't hear anybody yeah. complain about it. In matter of fact, it got a lot of national press. Right. <laughs> well, a change takes time. It, I, the patient is persistent. It does. Don't get mad, get even. Right. <laughs> I'll just keep moving forward. Can you read it? Yes, keep calm and keep lead. Calm on. and lead. That's what I try to do. And with a smile too. Calm <laughs> and smile. <laughs> you can ask my wife, like, why do you ever get angry? Like, what's the point of that? <laughs> yeah. And so, I mean, the barriers to to in other states. I mean, you, other states have made this effort and have it hasn't yet happened. Um, it, it is. The, is it just that people are, are read into this myth? Or that is it the Italian American community? We haven't seen the Italian American community jump up and down with this with the, the proclamation. It's now three years, four years in a row. It started in '16, so it's uh, it's not like it's had a huge. There's been no pushback. I mean, I haven't heard any, and, and I haven't read any, but uh, so. For me, uh, you know, I, I am one of the sponsors of this bill, and actually, I think listening to you, uh, it, it is to me a bit. I'm feeling much more uh, engaged in this effort this year. I just think that completing history—it's a—it's a wonderful point. We're not erasing history. It's like what we're dealing with with our constitutional amendments. Things have to be living and have meaning for the living. And I think the meaning for the, the living here for me would tend, the arc of history for me bends toward doing this now. And um, I, I would say, who is this holiday for? It, it, it is for the living. And in that regard, I would say that it's time for us to do this. I, I would agree that it's, it's probably about timing. That's why this is happening now. Uh, it's, it's the time. Uh, the change comes slowly. And it hasn't been time but now it's closer to that time. In terms of why, why this is a holiday and, and that being for the people of people present, uh, today's people, some, there is occasionally some pushback. I haven't personally heard it from the Italian American community who see this as a holiday celebrating one of their own. Um, I understand that. People are proud of who they are, understand it. I would submit basically that no other nationality has a holiday for themselves. Well, what do you think St. Patrick's Day is? 
It's not official. No, that's true. It's true. But it's it? I, and and that, was, that was my next sentence. <laughs> oh, yes. If you're Irish, you celebrate St. Patrick's Day. Yeah. yeah. If you're Norwegian, you celebrate St. Knut's Day. Uh, Leif Erikson's Day. Leif Erikson's Day. There is Saint such Knut's a thing, mm -hmm. and I think uh, I think it's celebrated in Minnesota. Yeah, and Scottish, but there are tons, you're right, yeah, they're special no, they're they are Italian, holidays. The Italian, they're not holidays, but <coughs> no, with Italian, we always celebrate things like the Feast of St. Gennaro, and there's like a bunch of different feasts that right. Italians right. are just yeah, I always consider them, maybe they're religious, I don't know, but I just thought they were Italian holidays. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Every day is an Italian holiday. <laughs> I, I think that, um, and the way it became it was declared a federal holiday, but it became a state holiday holiday for state employees because of the Vermont State Employees Union. And I mean, getting it into the, yeah. to, because... Oh, it definitely enters into labor negotiations, yeah. that's it, for sure. It, that's how it becomes, yes. I would suggest that Indigenous People's Day, as, as opposed to being uh, memorializing a particular person, it, it it epitomizes something similar to what Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday does, in that that stands as an icon for civil rights. Something that um, this country recognized that it needed to deal with and continues to deal with. That is what that is about, this country reckoning with its history and wanting to do better. Indigenous People's Day is exactly the same thing. We are recognizing our history and realizing that we should do better. That's how I place this holiday. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and just one last thought. I just think indigenous peoples, the, the plurality of it is very useful because we have this indigenous people that actually fall over the northern side. And there were never any Indians in Vermont. That's what they taught in the schools. Until the last few decades. It was right in the history books I can show too. So yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Rich. Thank you, Rich. Mr. Wright? So, well, thank you very much for the to, to come in and, and give this uh, testimony. So uh, I guess I should introduce myself a little bit. So I'm Robert Wright. I'm the uh, Vermont resident, now living in Burlington. Uh, lifelong Vermont resident. Well, at least fifth generation from the European side Vermont resident. And uh, so, yeah, I, I too love Vermont. I know we can do better uh, in terms of a number of things, including the observation of uh, Columbus Day, as it has been in the past, at least. So uh, I've given uh, a copy of the testimony, most of which uh, Sylvia, my, my partner, uh, Sylvia Knight, my partner, has written. And you all have it. Um, I could quickly read through it, I guess, if you like. Uh, one of the things that I would mention is that uh, we both are members of the Episcopal Diocese of Vermont, and our bishop and, and others have taught us about dignity as being part of, of, of the Jesus movement. And our diocese is engaged in a process of trying to heal from the infection of racism, which undermines dignity in the community. Our parish in Burlington is planning a series on dismantling racism. Now, uh, celebrating Indigenous Peoples Day, which uh, we certainly support, uh, as the alternative uh, that you just mentioned, that can help us honor the dignity of Indigenous peoples who still live here in Vermont and in the U.S. Frankly, we find it shameful to continue celebrating and honoring a man who denied dignity to the people he encountered in the Americas, bringing violence, disease, and exploitation everywhere.
very limited. Uh, we are allies of uh, the Migrant Justice Organization uh, in Vermont. Uh, we are working to uphold dignity and human rights of immigrants here in Vermont, many of whom are fleeing long-term effects of U.S. and Canadian exploitation of their land and people in Mexico. And Chapa State in Mexico is the homeland of many uh, farm workers in Vermont, and it's a place where native people have lived on the land for centuries, but have struggled uh, since the 20th century because of economic and political factors, including NAFTA. Native peoples in Chapas rose up against oppression in 1994 and began to develop community structures as alternatives to external domination and, and resulting poverty. Now, celebrating Indigenous Peoples Day could honor our Mexican and Guatemalan uh, immigrant neighbors and honor their dignity and contributions to our state and country, rather than honoring a cruel and greedy man who persecuted their ancestors centuries ago. So just let's not continue this uh, travesty. We're members of the Vermont Racial Justice Alliance, and we're working to dismantle uh, the implicit bias and systemic racism that infect the whole society in Vermont. And we feel it deeply that it's time to align our holidays with our aspirations and positive values. Now, we must remove the name of Columbus and transform the date to a time of honoring and averting from indigenous people, our neighbors who live here. And we ask you to please vote S68 out of committee before crossover with a positive recommendation for passage. Thank you very much for the time to speak. Thank you. So while you were talking, I um, had this thought, and I it isn't formed, so it might come out sounding really stupid but um, so we, we we are a nation made up of people who were here and people who came yeah. and do we also have an immigrant day acknowledging the fact that we are I mean, I mean should we have a day that acknowledges that we are all we have people who are here, but the rest of us came. However we came, we came from someplace else. So we're immigrants. And do we, I, I mean, I don't know how this was forming, but when you were talking about the, the um, migrant justice, the people who are here, um, that migrant justice is working really hard for our undocumented dairy workers, are not indigenous people. They are immigrants. Do we? Well, how do actually? But they are indigenous. They are. No, they indigenous. are not indigenous to Vermont. They're indigenous. Ah, that's the nice thing about indigenous no. people. So no, uh, my my understanding of this is that we would be acknowledging indigenous peoples in Vermont. We can't. We can't acknowledge in the in indigenous, indigenous peoples in. Central America. I, I, I mean, uh, am I missing something here? I, Actually, I think that uh, uh, somewhere in the statement we did uh, suggest that it would enable us to um, to honor indigenous people in, in the U.S. at least, as well as. In yes, my understanding is it's in, in honoring indigenous people from. It, yes, it, it, it honors the, the uh, recognized tribes. Um, right, but it, in Vermont. Yeah, but it also, let me just see where it's. I, I, I don't think, I, I don't think it's right. I, I, no, I hear what you're saying, I, 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 think I think it's a right or wrong. I think it depends on how you interpret it. I could see it being, there's a reason to believe we're talking about indigenous Vermonters, which would be the Abnakis and others. But there's also a reason to think it might be for the nation. Frankly, I think it could be for the, the world. But because yeah. it, 
everywhere you go, there are indigenous people who need to be respected because of yes, their heritage yes. and their culture and their ties to the land. I agree with that. Those who were there first. Right. So yeah, kind so of, I think you can see it either way. I, I agree with that. I, so in three, it says the General Assembly recognizes and values the historic, cultural, and con contemporary significance of the indigenous peoples of the lands that later became known as the Americas. That's North and South America, which includes from Yeah, so we are a piece of it, but but I, I like Anthony, sort of feel that this is for all indigenous people, uh, and which would include those who migrated here and those who yeah. emigrated here. It would include and those who migrated here because they were not indigenous uh, uh, here. <coughs> no, it does not include. No, I think it includes. Anyway, my understanding is this includes indigenous people all over, including. So that would be my understanding. Okay, so yeah. I, my my ancestors were um, indigenous to north. Well, they were probably those terrible Vikings, is what they were. <laughs> um, but some of, some of them weren't. So you but, celebrated too because you were no, indigenous too. Oh, but, oh. but Okay, I well, they I weren't see. indigenous, in a sense. not they weren't indigenous to the U.S. They no, they the US. weren't. They, they weren't indigenous. But they to were indigenous someplace. The Greenland, right. right. Greenland, Greenland or Lapland. Or something. You can make the argument that if you respect indigenous people, you would not be have the U.S. invading Nicaragua or El Salvador and trying to like mess around with people's heritage uh, and okay. cultural politics. All right. Okay. I, it just. It was an aspect of it that I had never, that it never dawned on me that um, it, I, I just. It's okay, that's why we're here. Yeah, that's why we're having this conversation. Yeah, I no longer have the okay, floor. Wait, before you do. Yeah, I have I, to apologize and ask your indulgence. I have to be in White River in an hour or so. Uh, yes, go. I have to go feed the beer in a little while. Oh. Just, well, we're, it's just going to take us a few more minutes, but he has to leave because he has to referee a hockey game. Okay. <laughs> he can't Thank be late. You. Brian, good luck. Thank, Thank you. you. Don't get hit again. Well, find more hit. Safe <laughs> So, Rich, you were about to comment on it. Um, yeah, if I could just um, speak to what you're saying. Yeah. Uh, I, I find the language in the bill to be inclusive. It allows for it to be as open as you want it to be. Um, I, I, as I mentioned earlier, the, the actions of which Columbus is an exemplar um, are not limited to Columbus and to the people of this continent. It happens everywhere. Um, indigenous people in Ireland were were smashed oh boy. by the British Empire. Yeah. Yeah. It happens everywhere yeah. where, where there is yeah, my, uh, my colonialism life. going on. So uh, it allows for that. However, we're in Vermont, and so this would be an action taken by Vermont and to be applied here first. I, I, okay. right. I own the statement, charity begins at home. I have to start here. Yeah. I start in Brattleboro. I'm the one that lobbied this through Brattleboro. I know. As you know, yes. and, and Marlboro, maybe too. And Marlboro beat us to the punch by three weeks because <laughs> they have time. Beat. They're small and nimble. <laughs> but yes, uh, we work together on that. And um, now I'm, I'm hoping that you folks will consider this as well on a statewide basis. And then uh, who knows where it goes from there? Um, it's already moving elsewhere. So it, it allows for it to be as big as you want it to be. But um, love your neighbor first. That's okay. how I look at it. Yeah, it, it, it puts a whole new light on it for me. I mean, I had not, I had not thought about it that way at all. Um, about we're recognizing the indigenous people in Vermont. I had not thought about it at all in terms of acknowledging um, indigenous people the world over. And mm -hmm. Okay, yes, yeah, so I did ask a question. What can this committee do to advocate for this bill to help move it other than voting for it yourself, but can you advocate for it outside of this committee so that it, something happens this year that we get it passed? Well, and, and how can we help you? I think that 
<clears throat> my feeling is that we probably would not bring it to the floor unless we thought we had 16 votes because you do not want to bring it to the floor and have it defeated. Okay, we, so, we, so will. we have to find out which, how many, yeah, yeah, there's there's seven, enough so senators to, to get the 16 votes. Because 16. It, in, in my opinion, and I may be wrong here, but it would be worse to bring it to the floor and have it defeated. Um, but, so, but the first thing is we have to pass it here out of this the This committee, we have to, the and five that, of us have to pass it. And that will signal to the body, to the Senate, and also to the House, but first to the Senate, that we support this value and this change. Yeah. Do you, uh, as somebody absent besides this gentleman, who was the other person? Chris Bray. Chris Bray, Bray from Addison. I believe Addison he County. Sub supports it. He I, is one of the sponsors, we, I believe. We, and we haven't talked no, about it on this right. committee yet. Oh. We haven't had a conversation about <clears throat> support or non-support. Anthony yeah. Polina and uh, on this committee, Anthony Flynn and I signed on as supporters. But at, uh, Chris, I don't know where, how Chris is. He wasn't on the committee last year when we took it up. Yeah. The thing is, if we bring it, uh, if this committee supports it, but we bring it to the Senate floor and it fails, yeah. then you can't, it's hard to bring it up again next year. If we thought we needed more time, we could choose not to vote it out now. We could wait till next session, you know, build support, and it was, you know, pass it next year. So we need to get support for it and get people yeah. and call their senators. Yeah, or just ask them, you know. Yeah, and, and I, I love the fact, I, I, I uh, am also a big fan of Tommy Lee's and uh, in, 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 the, in the diocese of, of, of uh, I don't know, Woodstock, I guess, I remember in St. James. <coughs> And I'd forgotten that we had that charge this year of dismantling racism. That's sort of a, yeah, a good Harris. example for the for the for that effort. For Maurice year. Harris is working yeah. on the raw materials. Yeah. With that. Thanks for the reminder. You're welcome. So I think the the thing to do is to um, make sure. Wh where are you from again? We're from Burlington. Burlington. So you have six, six senators. senators are pretty much on board. So you have six senators that are on board. Yeah, I think I saw their names in the list of sponsors. No, they're actually only England. Only England. I'm not thinking of another bill. Not just I love not just I love Montpelier. Uh, I don't want to pay them an extra hundred bucks. So. Okay. No, no, you do not want to. <laughs> we will um, continue this conversation. We'll let you know when we when we're picking it up again. Thank you. Okay, you know Thank when, you very much. No, I don't know when. I would, I would like to know when you're... you're I'm just, to, the best thing to do is to... Um, Gail has... She has your contact info. Well. And we'll... Um, but also just watch the, the calendar because the week we come back is going to be chaotic and we're going to, and things might change from day to day. So. so this is your last week before the break. And then we come back, and that's our last week before crossover. The 15th is the deadline. And if I could just say to keep checking our committee mm -hmm. page, because we have many, many, many people who come into this room since we cover such a broad top, uh, range of topics. So please pay attention to the agenda and report on the agenda. Mm -hmm. And if, if I can, I'll, I'll reach out to you. But Please don't depend on me. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I, I check the calendar every day. <laughs>